Pretty for kids. Welcome back. Hi, guys. Okay, I am wearing my happy birthday hat. You want to know why? Because our memory verse is to the song, Happy Birthday. So here we go. Let's practice, okay? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Colossians 3, verse 16, Colossians 3, verse 16, Colossians 3, verse 16, Colossians 3, verse 16. Okay, good job, guys. That was awesome. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for these kids, and thank you for this story. I think about what I'm about to teach, Lord, and I am amazed at how powerful you are, how loving you are, and Lord, how amazing it was that you sent us your son to save us. I pray the kids would understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, kids, got to get rid of that now. Let's talk about what's happened to the people of Judah. They were taken to Babylon because they worshipped false gods and idols instead of the one true God. They broke the first and second commandment all the time. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. The second commandment, don't make an idol. They did both of those things. God takes them to Babylon for 70 years, and then he brings a new power. He brings Persia to conquer Babylon, and then King Cyrus of Persia, God works in King Cyrus's heart, and King Cyrus says, the people of Judah are going to go free. They're going to go back home to Jerusalem. They're going to make God a temple. We're going to pay for it. Neighbors, give them gold, give them silver, give them whatever they need. <gasps> And God's people are set free. And Zerubbabel, he leads 50,000 people back to Jerusalem. And when they get there, they build the altar and they worship God. And then they start building the foundation of the temple. And they're so excited. They shout and they scream and they're so happy. Some of the older people were not happy. They were a little disappointed with it. But most of the people were happy. Either way, they were shouting so loud that the people in the villages, in the towns, in the hillsides around Jerusalem, they could hear the noise. So I want to show you a picture of what that looked like, guys. Like you can see the people at the bottom working. There's some people on the top there. That's an old fashioned type of crane. This thing right here, kids, that's an old crane. And they were hoisting up those blocks and they were working hard to build the temple. That's pretty great, except something happened. Some people came, they heard the shouts, they heard the noises. And the Bible tells us people from the land of Samaria came down to Jerusalem to see what was going on. And when they saw Zerubbabel rebuilding the temple with the people, they said, oh, let us build the temple with you. Let us help you because we worship your gods as well. Kids, do you know who these people were? Remember, Samaria was the capital city of Israel. Israel was the kingdom in the north, and Judah was the kingdom in the south. Assyria came and conquered and scattered Israel in the north, long before Judah was taken captive. And so Samaria was still a city up in the north, but what happened was Assyria brought in foreign people, people from other lands. They came in, they started worshiping their gods, they worshipped idols. They did all of those uh, religious things they practiced, and they did it right there in Samaria. And then they actually brought in um, uh, Israelite to teach the people how to worship the one true God as well. But they mixed it all together. So they were worshipping idols. They were worshipping false gods. Some days they worshipped our God, the true God. And that's what they were doing up in Samaria. So they came down and they saw the people of Judah rebuilding this temple. And they said, oh, we'd like to help you. Yeah, we worship your God too. Because like we worship a lot of gods. But he's in there. We worship him. Let us help you. And do you know what the people of Judah said? No. No, we have to do this ourselves. We'll do this alone. You can't help. And do you know why they said that? Because they had just spent 70 years in Babylon as slaves for worshiping God wrong, for worshiping false gods, for worshiping idols. And they didn't ever want to do that again. They never wanted to go back to that disobedience. And so they said, no, you can't help us. We have to worship God right. We can't mix it with any false gods, with any idols. No, no, no. Well, you know what the people of Samaria, you know what they did? They were so 
angry. They started to try and stop the work rebuilding the temple. They did a lot of things to stop the work. They started to bribe, to pay the governors in the area to make it hard for the people of Judah. And then when King Cyrus, when he was no longer king and King Artaxerxes became king, they wrote King Artaxerxes a letter and they said, oh, the people in Judah in Jerusalem, they're rebuilding the temple and they're so rebellious. They're going to fight against you, Artaxerxes. You should stop it. So Artaxerxes He kind of looked into the history of Jerusalem and he thought, this is a strong people. I should stop it. And so the building of the temple was stopped for years. And the people, instead of building God's house, they started building their own houses. Until about, it was like 16 years later, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah came. And they encouraged the people. They said to Zerubbabel, to Joshua, they said, start building the temple again. This is God's house. This is more important than your houses. Do it. You got to work again. And so they started building the temple again. And then... The governor of Persia, because Persia was still the boss of this area. The governor of Persia at the time, Tatane, he came in, he saw what was happening, and he thought, huh, I wonder if this is even okay. I am going to write to the king. It was a new king now. Cyrus was already gone. Artaxerxes was gone. Now it was King Darius. Kids, do you remember King Darius? He was king when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. This is the same king. It's that time period. Daniel would have been in Persia and Babylon right now. He was a very, very old man if he was still alive. Okay, so King Darius gets a letter from Tatne. They're rebuilding the temple. I don't know if it's right. They say King Cyrus said it was okay. Can you check? And remember, when a king of the Medes and Persians, when they seal a law, it's law. No one can go against it. So King Darius was like, yeah, I'll check. And they read through all the scrolls and they check. And then they come across this scroll and they open it. And it's like, oh yeah, King Cyrus said they could go free. He said they could go back to Jerusalem and build their God a temple. And he said we should pay for it, that Persia should help. So Darius sent a letter back to the governor, Tatane, and he said this. I'm going to read it to you from the Bible because it's amazing, okay? Let the work on this house of God alone. Leave them alone. Don't bother them. Let them work. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. Let them do it. Moreover, I make a decree, like a law, regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. So Darius is like, I'm going to make a law to help these guys. The cost is to be paid to these men in full and without delay from the royal revenue and tribute of the province of Babylon beyond the river. (gasps) You're going to pay for it, Tatne. You're going to take your tribute. You're going to take your royal money and you're going to help build the temple. Give it to them. And whatever is needed, bulls, rams, sheep for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, or oil, as the priests at Jerusalem require, let that be given to them day by day without fail. Give them all the stuff they need. If they need a sheep to sacrifice, give it to them. If they need oil, give it to them. That they may offer pleasing sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. King Darius, I think probably because of some of what he'd seen in Daniel's life, what God had done in King Darius's heart, King Darius believed in God, partly at least. And he wanted the priests to pray for him and his sons in the temple in Jerusalem. Because he thought that our God was the God of heaven, the real God. (gasps) Isn't that amazing, kids? I think that's amazing. And so they started working on the temple again. And they got help. If they needed money, if they needed anything, the governor of Persia from their area, Tatane, he was to help them. That's so cool. So they finish building the temple. It's finally done. I want to show you a picture of it, okay? Okay, kids, look. There is a picture. This is actually, when I looked this up, this was a picture that came up when I put in the second temple in Jerusalem. No, they don't know, kids, if it looked exactly like this. We don't really know. So, kids, 
when they finished the temple, they celebrated, they worshiped God. They celebrated the Passover feast and the Passover, that was what they celebrated to remember God bringing them out of Egypt, freeing them from slavery. He had just freed them from slavery again from Babylon, right? And they were celebrating that as well. That was amazing, kids. Do you want to know why building the temple was such a big deal? Do you want to know why it was so important to God and so important to the people? Because the temple was where God dwelt. It was where he lived. Can you imagine that? He lived among his people in the temple. And he wanted to live among his people because he loved them. Kids, when Jesus came, do you know that God can live among us right in our heart? The Holy Spirit dwells within us. He's a promised helper that dwells. He lives right inside us when we become Christians. And the temple, it was really important because that was how they were with God. But do you know that now we can be with God wherever we are because of Jesus Christ coming, because he paid for our sin, because he died and rose again. He died in our place. And when we repent, when we believe and we ask God to save us, the Holy Spirit comes and lives with us. We can worship God anywhere we are. It's amazing. We can pray to him. Jesus makes it so that God listens to us. It's amazing, kids. And, you know, when I think about that, when I think about what Jesus did, what it cost him and how much he loved us and how he made a way for us to be at peace with God, we can be with God again. When I think about that, you know what I want to do? I want to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in my heart to God. That's what I want to do. I'm so thankful. Dear God, we love you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way to be at peace with the Father. Thank you, Father, for sending your only Son to make a way for us to be at peace with you. Holy Spirit, thank you for living in our hearts, allowing us to obey, helping us to worship God wherever we are. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Bye, kids. See you next week.